In this video, we're going to look at how entropy and enthalpy contribute to whether a reaction completes itself or whether the reaction forms a dynamic equilibrium. Let's start by looking at enthalpy, which is the change in potential energy between reactants and products. We can first do this by looking at delta H, which we see is in the reactants here, meaning that energy has to be added into this reaction in order to make the forward reaction happen. This is the textbook definition of an endothermic reaction, which normally means that the reaction will not be spontaneous. And we can see that simply by looking at our activation energy. If we look at the activation energy of the forward reaction, we see that it is significantly greater than the Ea of the reverse reaction, and therefore the reaction is more likely to be spontaneous in the reverse direction. Now what this means in terms of enthalpy is that if we look at enthalpy, the tendency to favor a more stable, lower potential energy form, enthalpy is pushing this reaction in the reverse direction. However, we will, if you actually try this reaction, you will find that it is not only spontaneous happening without even needing to mix these two ionic solids in water, we can see that this reaction will happen by itself and is so strongly endothermic that the water that you produce in the end will actually turn to ice because of the temperature decrease. So why is the endothermic reaction spontaneous if it has a higher Ea than the reverse exothermic reaction? Well, let's take a look at the effect of entropy here, and one of the major factors that we talked about as far as entropy goes is state of matter. So if we take a look at the states of matter of the reactant particles, we see that both of them are solid, meaning that they have a relatively ordered structure given that they are ionic solids and that their atomic motion is very predictable because solids always retain a specific shape until they are broken. But then if we look at the states of matter of the product molecules, we see two aqueous ions, one gas and one liquid, meaning that all of the products have more disordered and more unpredictable states of matter than our reactants do. Even more simply, if we consider the number of particles involved in the reactants and the products, we see that the reactants only have three individual particles, each of these two ionic solids, whereas if you count the number of product particles, we end up with 15. Because there are more particles, the particles and the products have even more possibilities as far as their movement goes, which makes them inherently harder to predict in terms of their movement, which means that their structure is fundamentally more disordered than the reactants are. So from this, we can conclude that our products have a greater entropy, and as the second law of thermodynamics states, entropy within an isolated system is naturally going to increase, and therefore we can see that entropy is what is pushing this reaction in a forward direction. Now, because this reaction is spontaneous, even though the, in the forward direction it's endothermic, we can conclude that the effect of entropy on this reaction is greater than the effect of enthalpy because an endothermic reaction is still spontaneous. And for that reason, we can consider this to be an entropically driven reaction as opposed to an enthalpically driven reaction of which most exothermic reactions are. We can use this information in order to predict whether a dynamic equilibrium system will form. And in order to do that, we can take a look at a chemical reaction and see which side is favored by enthalpy and which side is favored by entropy. So if we consider this first combustion reaction here, we can see that enthalpy will favor the products of this reaction because our reaction is exothermic, and we can tell that because delta H is in the products, and as we know from the relationship of activation energy, 
we know that the activation energy of the forward reaction is significantly less than the activation energy of the reverse reaction, and therefore the forward reaction is easier to do. Next, if we count particles and look at the states of matter, we see that our reactants have solid benzoic acid and oxygen gas, whereas both of our product molecules are gases. And then if we count particles here, we see that we have 15 plus 2 is a total of 17 reactant particles, whereas in the products we have 20 product particles, and therefore, based on a cursory glance here, we can see that entropy also favors the products once again because the products have more particles and because the products also have more disordered states of matter. Now, from these observations, we can see that because enthalpy and entropy are both pushing the reaction to go in the forward direction, there is not neither of these is pushing the reaction to go in the reverse reaction, and therefore we can conclude that the forward reaction dominates and that we are going to go to completion and no equilibrium system will form. If we take a look at reaction number two, we can see that this is the opposite situation. So we can see that because delta H is in the reactants and therefore the EA reverse is greater than EA forward, and as far as enthalpy goes, we are going to be favoring the reverse reaction here because of the lower activation energy of the exothermic reverse reaction. If we look at states of matter for entropy, we can't really compare that because every single particle is a gas. But if we count the number of particles, we see that our reactants have seven particles, whereas our products only have two. And therefore, the entropy will also favor the reverse reaction. And so we get the opposite system where the reactants are favored are opposite to the previous question, where both enthalpy and entropy are pushing the reaction backward, and therefore it is the reverse reaction that dominates, and therefore the reaction will go to completion of our reactants, and no equilibrium will form. But when we consider the reaction that we dissected, because the reaction is endothermic in the forward direction, that means that enthalpy is going to favor our reactants, but based on state of matter and the number of particles, entropy is going to favor the products, and therefore, neither the forward nor the reverse reaction will completely dominate over the other, and so we get both reactions happening, and this is a situation where we can end up with an equilibrium where enthalpy and entropy favor opposite sides of a chemical reaction, leading to both directions happening simultaneously. So the conclusions from this, if enthalpy and entropy favor the same side of the reaction, that direction dominates, and we get the reaction going to completion in that direction. But if enthalpy and entropy favor opposite sides of a chemical reaction, we get both directions happening at the same time, and because both forward and reverse reactions can happen at the same time, this is the situation where we can get a dynamic equilibrium that occurs. In the next video, we're going to look at how to assign numerical values to entropy so that if we're ever given ambiguous situations of a chemical reaction where it's impossible to tell which side is favored by entropy, we can mathematically calculate which side is favored by entropy.